Hi, I'm the Rick in Rick Turns. And in today's video, and in a handful of subsequent videos, I'm going to show you how I make my own tool rest for my lathe. Uh, significantly, no welding is required. I think uh, making these tool rests is easily within reach of any wood turner. If you've got welding equipment and the knowledge to use it, you probably didn't even bother to look at this video because you can make them out the wazoo. But for the rest of us, without welding equipment and without the knowledge to use welding equipment, um, it's a different story. These tool rests I put together with silver brazing. Silver brazing is very strong. It's used industrially. Uh, and it doesn't take expensive equipment and it doesn't take a lot of knowledge. It's actually quite easy to do. Uh, anyway, these are fun to make. They're relatively inexpensive once you have your tools. Uh, if you're interested in making your own tool rest, not just one, because it wouldn't be really economical to just make one uh, unless you've already got all the tools. But uh, if you're going to make two or three or four different links, as I have done, uh, you might want to watch the rest of these videos and take a look and see how I do it. I'm breaking the videos up into probably six different videos just because uh, even though it doesn't take long to make these, there's a lot of material to cover and how, how to get them prepped, uh, how to do the brazing, uh, uh, how to measure for the uh, correct height on your lathe and things like that. And I didn't want to have one really long video, so I hope I'm going to have six short videos, including this one, which is an overview of the whole process. So let's go over to my workbench and I'll show you the other tool rests that I made over the last eight years or so. These two tool rests are the first ones that I made. Uh, one inch bar across here, one inch rod down here. And the rod, the top of the rod is curved in one inch. Uh, it dips in one inch right through there. And I did that with an angle grinder and an abrasive wheel. And that took a long time. It makes a very good tool rest. These are very, very strong, but they're kind of hard to make. It's difficult to cut that curve right there into this top piece, and once you get it cut, you really need to smooth it down good so that you get a tight fit here, a smooth fit between these two bars, because silver brazing does depend on having a close fit. Um, so this was kind of difficult to do. Also, uh, when you get ready to, to braze it up, it's kind of hard to keep this piece perfectly per perpendicular to this piece. Uh, not impossible, of course, but a little bit difficult. Uh, after that, I went to make some tool rests like this, uh, an inclined bar tool rest. Different sizes, as you, as you can see. And this one is quite simple. You take your tool post and you cut it right up here. Generally, I think I cut it at about 45 degrees. Then you hold these two pieces together. I just kind of pushed them together inside a little kiln I made out of bricks uh, and silver braised them together that way. It's uh, workable. It's certainly workable. Uh, it's not the easiest way simply because it's hard to hold these pieces together. And you do need to hold them together fairly well. You know, they don't have to be clamped together and it's hard to clamp them anyway. Um, but it's kind of hard to hold them together. But as you can see, it wasn't that hard because I made three of them. I've also made a couple of cool curved tool rests. These are for bowl work, primarily, of course. I've got a small radius here and a large radius here. And for these, as you can see right here, what I did was cut a slot right down into the top of the tool post that was the width of this, which I think is about a quarter inch. Uh, and this wasn't too difficult. It's kind of hard with an angle grinder to get a really tight fitting slot. Uh, I cut it in there, it was kind of loose, then I took a hammer and pounded the sides around it until I had a slightly tighter fit. I did that for both of these. This one is obviously a simpler tool rest, but it's the same kind of thing. Uh, cut a slot in here into the tool post, put this down in it, and then silver braze them together. My favorite tool rest is my most recent tool rest, which is this one right here. This is my angle iron tool rest. And this is very easy to make. Uh, and it's a design I'll use from now on when I need a tool rest. This piece right here, the tool post, 
Of course, it's brazed right here, just like the other ones. But before I braze it, I cut a hole, I drill a hole in the angle iron, I drill a hole down in here, and I tap this hole, and then I drive a screw into it, a little bolt, to hold it together. And that works great. That holds it together nice and snug while I do the silver brazing. So this is definitely the easiest to make. Then with this one also, uh, along this length, the top length of the angle iron, I just silver braze on a wear strip. This I think is 5 16 inch rod. I already had it for some other purpose. Uh, so I just cut a length of it off. And I'll braze it in two or three different places across here. I don't braze it across the whole length. This has held up extremely well. As I pointed out, I think this one is the best that I've made. And this is the one uh, I'm going to show you how to make in this video and in subsequent videos. I want to mention very briefly in this video, materials. Obviously you're going to need steel, but you don't need expensive steel. You don't need tool steel. Uh, you don't need any kind of water hardening or oil hardening or air hardening steel at all. This is just regular soft steel that I've been using. Some of it I bought from Home Depot, uh, but generally most of my stuff has come from online suppliers because I needed heavier stock. Uh, you'll probably end up paying more in shipping for your steel than you will than the steel itself. But most of these are just, uh, I got different sizes for tool post. I got different sizes for uh, the top bar along the tool rest. You can see this one right here, that's one that I made a curved tool rest out of. And they're all just, I think, 10, 18 mile steel. Uh, about the cheapest thing I could find on uh, one of the online sites, which I'll provide later. Let's talk about tools now. You don't need a whole lot of tools to be able to do this. Now, you're going to have to cut steel, and of course, a hacksaw, one way of doing it. But it's slow, and it's pretty tiring. So what I use is an angle grinder with a cutting wheel on it. So if you're going to do this, I'd certainly recommend it, getting one of these instead of trying to do all your cutting uh, by hand. After you get your steel cut, you're going to have to heat it. Um, it doesn't require welding, as I've said. It does require a good bit of heat. Now this is one way of doing it with a Map Pro tank uh, and obviously a little nozzle here. And this works, but it is slow. And I use this for probably half the tool rest that I've made. So it's one way of doing it, and it's not too expensive. What I recommend, however, having made a bunch of these, is to use this. This is an OxyMap kit. Same uh, map gas as I showed you before, but this time it's got an oxygen tank with it. Uh, you can buy these, or at least you used to be able to buy them from Home Depot. I haven't seen one there lately but I have seen them online. Now the advantage of this is this torch with the oxygen burns one heck of a lot hotter than the standard MAP torch. And whereas a MAP torch is going to take you 30 to 40 minutes of heating, uh, the same amount of work can be done with this in uh, anywhere from uh, 2 to 10 minutes depending on uh, how much metal or the size of the metal that you're brazing together. Now, why would you want to make your own tool rest when you can go out and spend an enormous amount of money, which to me is anything more than $20, and buy a commercial tool rest? Uh, the commercial tool rest, which for any decent size, uh, starts around 60 bucks and goes up real fast from there. Well, if, you're only, if you only need one tool rest, you probably are not going to come out ahead by just making your own. But if you're going to make 11 of them like I've done so far, uh, actually 12, I made one for a friend, then uh, having the ability to make them yourselves is pretty nice. Plus, whether it's economical or not, I find it a lot of fun. It's very simple, metalworking. Make a few cuts, uh, tap a hole, do some silver brazing, and you're done. Works great. To wrap this up, I want to show you a brief overview of the whole process from starting with the raw metal to a finished tool rest. This is not to teach you how to do it because I'm going to cover everything in detail in later videos. But I just want to show you a brief picture how we're going to get there. So let's take a look.
we've got everything there. We got everything. So, stay tuned to this channel. I'll have other videos up shortly, going through the entire process in detail, showing you what tools you need, how to use them, uh, what the materials are that you're going to need, and where you can buy them at, and of course, how to go and do the silver bracing. So, stay tuned. I'll see you later. <laughs> Thank you.